and welcome back to another short-term rental intel podcast hosted by hosty today we have craig callian craig callian is uh, one of the hardest working people i know one of the most disciplined people i know has recently joined hosty i'd say about five months ago now he's joining us from the long-term property management side of the world has managed many 300 plus units here in Colorado Springs and in the Denver area, and even has a few accolades to his name. And uh, we're, we're fortunate to have him and uh, also a close friend of mine of several years. So it's been uh, a lot of fun and we've got a pretty bright future ahead of here of us here. So welcome Craig Callian to the SDR Intel podcast. Well, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Absolutely. And I am uh excited to talk about short-term rentals yeah quickly just a brief background on you uh tell us where you came from absolutely so i i've been in colorado for about six years now and i started my career in colorado in long-term property management so uh did that for five years uh learned a lot key take key takeaway was i did not want to do long-term property management anymore but i mean the skill set that goes into you know what these property managers are doing it's it's quite something and I'm, I'm glad i was able to retain everything that i did learn and you know it's something that you can transpose into all areas of your life and um you know i've known you know evan and phil and killian for quite some time and i was you know kind of on the sideline watching hosty grow throughout the years and i was excited to make the jump i came on here in in may so Right on. What are some things from long-term property management that you're happy to walk away from and maybe some things you're going to miss? Because, <laughs> well, I mean, I've watched you. I've known you for the years of watching you long-term property management, and some days were not very fun, no. to the least. I mean, there's a lot of similarities, sure. It's property management either way. But with long-term, it's, you know, you get – every problem is, I think, exacerbated where – you get a person that's, you know, upset, angry, they're there for 13 months or more. And then, you know, every instant they want to, um, you know, call you, make their problem your problem, which is, you know, property management. But you can do everything in your power to try to make everyone happy, but you get 300 people into one spot. It's, it's just hard. And, you know, carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders in that sense, it wears you down after a while. And, you know, so I'm certainly happy to walk away from that um, in the sense that, you know, everything that we do now is pretty much departmentalized where it's not solely on one person. Things that I missed, that list is uh, quite short. <laughs> I mean, I miss the people I work with, but they're all kind of jumping on, on ship with us now. So that's true. Uh, we have a few people that I, I started my long term property management career that now came over to Hostie. So excited to have them. And, you know, uh, I know for a fact that they're hard workers because I've seen them in the trenches. So, yeah. So I'd say that's, I mean, the vast quantity of problems. It's just so much, it's greater in long-term property management. And, you know, certainly we come up with, you know, a, a guest you can't make happy, you know, no matter what we do. But I feel like it's fewer and far between. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, just less time with a guest in the short-term rental market. Are you so you're you're working with Hosty in the business development role, owner acquisition role? Are you seeing a lot of people come from the long-term rental market? People have been uh, finding their own tenants for a year, two years, whatever it may be, looking for resources about short-term rentals. Are you seeing a lot of people make the switch? What are some things you're hearing? I am seeing. I, I'd say a majority of the leads that I encounter are people looking into other models you know veering away from the long-term model so i am seeing that more and more and people ask me like hey you know like isn't this more risky there's you know so much more involved a lot more variables and really i mean it's not but it's the way i look at it it's going from a salary job where you know what you're getting each month each week to a commission structure and I mean, I've done similar things with my career life where I go from salary to commission based and so forth. And I mean, I'm certainly happy I did. And I've not met a homeowner who has switched to the short term model that was like, man, I wish I was still doing long term. I, yeah. I mean, maybe you've seen that, but I certainly haven't. I mean, there's been one or two, but it really depends on the home. But it's not it's not very frequent at all. You, I mean, we wouldn't we probably wouldn't have seen the growth that we've seen over the last couple of years if people were stepping, just dipping their toe and then a year later getting out of it. I think we've just seen continuous growth. 
I mean, would you say that's a fair analogy, like a commission based to or salary to commission for the structure? Oh, you know, I see what you're saying. I actually missed that. Okay, I'm glad you cleared this. <laughs> I see what you're saying. So, like, it'd be like uh, long term, it's very reliable. Yeah. It's you know what paycheck you're getting. Month. Yeah, ab- absolutely. You pretty much get it locked in for just mm-hmm. about a year. Whereas a short term rental model is your June, July's, those are your Harvey, August, those, those, you know, maybe different in different markets, but primarily for this area, <clears throat> pardon me, for this area, those summer months and then the winter, it's a little bit less. I, okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one of the biggest things. People think there's the security with the long term rental. <clears throat> They've been doing it for a while. Uh, it's almost uh, a, not a complacency, but it's very comfortable. Sure. Well, and <clears throat> I always tell people too, just the wear and tear on your property. I mean, people are going into your house, sure, and you know you might have more, you know, quantity people and you know every different kind of people. People who just want to, you know, sit in the house and do a staycation, or people who are dropping their bags off and going to Garden of the Gods. But regardless of which, these people aren't live living in your house. There's a difference when people are, you know, moving in furniture, moving around furniture you know, hanging up things on the walls. Like, you know, like I think for the retention of your property, if you want to keep that asset, short-term rental actually preserves it longer, in my opinion. Because, I mean, I've seen some scary stuff with long-term and it's like, how, why, you know, what were you thinking? Did you do any 30-day leases in the uh, apartment complexes? <clears throat> Six months, anything less than a year? Yes, so we, okay. we would do uh, 3 to 12 starting out and then at that option after they completed a lease term whether it's three 12 13 whatever they'd have the option to go month to month sure on every single lease in that was at least a year do you pretty much have to strip the the unit carpet what, what's the process carpet in the long term we basically gave it a life of five years okay and that was lucky if you got that i mean and some of them i mean like honestly it it should be a three-year lifespan if that just because it's so beat down you know it's it's a rental people treat it like a rental like they're not gonna you know necessarily take their shoes off every time they walk in the house or they don't care what they're dragging across the floor and i mean that was very evident on you know getting keys back from some people it you wouldn't even recognize it in, in a lot of cases okay what are you seeing for uh homes that just the difference between what might make a good long-term rental versus what make a good what may make a good short-term rental i mean any home in colorado springs (laughs) that you can get a permit for makes a good short-term rental but i mean honestly (laughs) yeah like long-term it's not investment advice yeah not investment (laughs) advice um with with long term, people are looking for your basics. With with short term, like you need your basics plus a little something. Because I mean, I always tell people like, what would you like to see in in a vacation home that you're staying? So whether that's a foosball table, ping pong table, just space. And you know, also you you look at so it's, it's more about the setup really. I mean, you get your people coming from New York that live in a studio apartment, you know, just crammed in. A king size bed sounds amazing. You know, they never have had that before and. You know, just creating an experience outside of what they're used to. So, I mean, to answer your question, I think a lot of it's about the setup for long-term versus short-term. If you're doing a long-term, there's less care that goes into the front end of it, but then you can kind of withdraw because, I mean, you have us. Yeah. And long-term, like, you're always somewhat in the game. And even if you have a, a long-term property management company, you're still, you know, you have to be engaged. And, you know, depending on their business structure, their model, it's not, not a clean takeaway. Yeah, absolutely. And you did a short-term rental with your... You've actually pretty much done both in your personal life. Yeah, so I uh, I learned a lot of things about short-term rentals before I, I came on with Hostie because I, I did my own house myself you know, on my lunch breaks after work and uh, certainly wish I knew some of what we do now uh, back then. I mean, I had uh, my good friend Killian to help me <laughs> you know, with some of the setup stuff, but... You know, I was certainly uh, running around during the day to day. I remember the one time my dryer broke and well, I had somebody a, checking in. It was my single, hair dryer. Like, <laughs> and you've had, you had a guest put joints all over your yeah, house man, that the, you found for months afterwards. In the first aid kit, <laughs> in fake plants. It was. <laughs> so in a, in a single day, you might be turning over a long-term unit at the apartment complexes you'd be managing, answering a tenant, a resident phone call, and handling a guest checkout and a guest phone call or phone conversation or check-in, whatever it may be, 
or having your washer and dryer go out at your own short-term rental in a single day. Yeah, it was a very busy time in my life, so I'm, I'm glad to look back on it. Yeah. Are you looking for another property? I am, so I, <laughs> I feel like that's... I, I always, uh, I like to stay busy. So, I, and, you know, seeing the the potential in this market, not only in Colorado Springs, but as you know, the, you know, cities surrounding us, they're a hot market to invest in right now too. So, you know, I, I'm certainly putting my money where my mouth is when I'm talking to these homeowners because it is, I mean, a lot of potential out there and I don't see that diving down anytime soon. I, I see it continuing to grow. What are you looking for with your knowledge now with the short-term rental market and long-term rental? What would you be looking for? What areas, what type of home, how would you kind of set it up? Well, I'm kind of biased for locations. I'm in Old Colorado City right now. Uh, getting a short-term rental in Old Colorado City, it's, uh, it's a hard feat uh, just with the density and the restrictions and whatnot. Not impossible, but I've kind of expanded my parameters. I'm looking more for like a fourplex type setup. And, you know, it's kind of a castle in the sky at this point. But, you know, I, I got the idea down, location. I mean, with something like that, you kind of have to be What fluid. if we did have a castle in the sky that we could short-term I, rental out? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm so, all for it. yeah, a fourplex. Why would you go with a fourplex? Well, I mean, again, not investment advice, but I would have it as my primary residence. And then it would be, um, you know, I'd live there and then just rent out the other three units. Sure. Um, you know, if I could get all three with a short-term rental permit, absolutely. Otherwise, you know, diversify with a midterm corporate model as well. And then, um, you know, like I said, it'd be the primary residence, so it'd be easier to do up front. And then I would ideally convert my home in Old Colorado City to a midterm or short-term, uh, depending on the, the permitting at the time. Gotcha. Well, so I'm going to say a question back at you. I know you're, you know parameters are you know expanded yeah, looking absolutely. what markets are hot for you where are you trying to put your money uh personally i mean there's there's where i might direct someone to do it and then where personally personally i'm looking for and that would be a property that of course would be zoned r2 at least um, that allows for the possibility of a non-owner occupied short-term rental permit Neustra, uh, right? Neustra. we've yes we've coined a term N-O-O-S-T-R-A, non-owner occupied short-term rental permit application. <laughs> and uh, it would be an R2 zone property. I think that depending on the home, uh, one that maybe needed to be fixed up a little bit, but it would allow someone to live there. So it has a mother-in-law suite, a second unit, a duplex of sorts, and that the other side of the other unit could be rented out as a short-term rental. And then over the longer period of time, if it's an R3 or something like that, or it was kind of a fixer up, maybe the long term, the exit strategy would be to build on that and make it into nicer units and sell it. So that's kind of a, a nutshell. And that doesn't necessarily need to be in Colorado Springs. That would be a good model for Colorado Springs for the permitting. But if you could find a similar setup or if I could find a similar setup in maybe Cascade, Woodland Park, um, a little bit north. Um, so it, it sounds like you're more focused on the, the zoning and the potential in the future than, you know, yes. the, the brick and mortar for you know, I mean, knowing what we know, you can <clears> take, <throat> it's maybe not the most preferred situation, but you can take a, a, a property and if run well and well appointed and you, and you touch it up nicely, can be a pretty lucrative vacation rental, at least enough that y you have more margin of error to work with than if you did, if you signed a long-term lease where you know, in a long-term lease situation, you're fortunate enough. For really, a good investment is just to break even and not have to to pay Build on the, the property. Yeah, 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 pay on the property every month. So, just knowing that a short-term rental is going to do probably two times what a long-term rental, if not more, it gives me a little bit more confidence to to take a swing at something. So, back to the long-term conversation. What is some, <laughs> you know, common questions that you've had or objections to switching to a short-term model? I think you brought it up right off the bat. A lot of people think that it's just stranger danger, uh, damage, uh, partying, and that's not, is there a, a section of that in the vacation rental industry? Yeah, absolutely. But you're seeing people show up for two, three days, and there's still the sense of being a guest. It's, it's much more of a hospitality industry side to it. 
So you see the bonehead guess. Uh, I feel like in people's minds, they go right to a bachelor party yeah, where it's like, exactly. you know, mirrors are getting broken. People are wrestling. Yes. Yeah, different games being played. Just, yeah. You know, where there might be a little bit lack of respect. There's, there's insurance and, and, and fees in place that the guest pays, unlike long-term rentals, in place to handle those, you know, 3% of reservations that come through your, your doors. I think that the average 3% of reservations turn into any type of damage claim. But the guest still treats it with a little bit more sense of being a guest, a hospitality type of feel. And they're out of there in two, three days. The home's being inspected. The home's being very thoroughly cleaned. And so I just, the damage part is a, is a big, uh, the expression is making mountains out of molehills. It's really not that much of an issue. That's a really good point though that you brought up with the home being inspected every couple couple days really because in long term, you know, whether it's a house or an apartment, <clears throat> it's really not like you're not getting boots on the ground walking through that home, that unit. Well, some people are week. comfortable living in their own filth. Well, and I mean what's <laughs> ironic to me, like people don't want to complain about things because they want to be a good resident. It's like your water heater's been leaking for five months. Like what? You know, oh it goes That's down true. the drain pan. And, you know, really it's going down the drain pan, but it's also creating mold or some, you know, havoc in the walls. Well, better for worse, the guest who's paying a couple hundred dollars a night at a vacation rental is going to, they're picking up the phone and they're going to call They're going to let us know yes. when there's problems. And, you know, I mean, like, sure, it's, you know, it can be a lot sometimes, but it's, it's a good thing for the longevity of these properties to have problems, you know, nipped in the bud quickly. Yes. And long term, you just don't get that properties get used and abused and people don't want to be a problem, you know, in a lot of cases. I know before I said people call a lot, but like, you know, you also get the other side of that where people don't and they just brush it under the rug because it's their home. They don't want people walking through it. We'll just live with the problem. Half the stove hasn't worked in a year, but we're good, you know, and you, you see that time and time again. So, I mean, I'm glad you brought up the, the inspections because that's something you just get more care for your property. Yeah. And. I mean, what we're doing, and just so people listening understand, there's a couple processes for dealing with damage at a vacation rental, depending on the platform you're on or if you're on many of them. A lot of times a guest will book, a security deposit will be taken, or there'll be some type of credit card hold on their account until the point of checkout after it's been inspected. I think it's about 12, 24 hours after the guest checks out, you have to submit a damage claim. So if a guest books out, your cleaners come in, or you as an owner come in, you inspect your property, you find any damage, you have to work with that booking website that uh, the guest booked over to have the guest payer for the website to reimburse. Uh, every, every, every booking website is slightly different. There's ways that you can screen your guests off platform, off these booking websites, and you can charge them a non-refundable guest deposit fee that gives them damage insurance during their stay. So... If Craig and you know a bachelor party of 18 people are going to Minnesota, and this in the Twin Cities, and this home says it sleeps 30 people, and there's the mirrors being knocked off the walls, there's things being you know flung everywhere, kind of that more rowdy side of things, he would be paying a substantial guest deposit fee that would extend $2,500 of guest damage insurance to that reservation so that you don't have to go directly to the booking website that it was booked on. You can kind of deal with it as a first line of defense off platform. And absolutely worth it all, all across the board in that sense. Because I mean, as a guest, you're going into a home, there's some variables. I mean, it could be complete, you know, in a sense, you accidentally break something and, you know, hit a wall, lean up on it and something falls or, you know, adversely, you could be <laughs> rowdy and, you know, like you shouldn't have done that, but you're covered either way. And, you know, from an owner and company standpoint, it just makes the process so much more simple. Yeah, absolutely. So where do you see maybe the next year, the next two years going in terms of your, your personal real estate investments, the direction with Hosty, maybe new markets that you're, you have your eye on? So for personal, I, I set myself the goal of you know, making you know, another real estate move in 2021. I'm sorry, 2022. It's you know, it's practically here. So um, yeah, it's it sometime in 2022. And I mean, my eyes are on a fourplex. Like I said, location's a little bit, I mean, vague right now. But as I get closer to my savings goals and whatnot, and, you know, I do have some equity to play with in my current home, thankfully. So, you know, we'll see what I do there. Um, actually, uh, 
renting out a few rooms right now and my roommates uh, just bought a house so congrats to them but yeah, you know I'll have three extra bedrooms in my house so uh, my girlfriend and I are gone a lot so probably gonna dabble in just the, the room share again you know for a little bit when we're not home um, so that's kind of where the por- personal portfolio goes uh, with Hosty, I'm I'm learning a lot you know as far as um, you know how what homes perform better what markets are hot and you know like three bedroom to four bedroom and seeing the the delta in those and you know being able to instruct people and just give them you know more i guess accurate knowledge to it so i mean i am i'm predicting we're going to see a lot more midterm rentals to be honest just because with the zoning and whatnot in colorado springs proper people are still looking to get a little bit more than a long-term rental which the midterm option it's a great option for them and you know we are expanding that market like crazy growth right now too, because, you know, we have traveling nurses, we have your internships, uh, five military bases. So, and we, you know, have a, a full-time midterm property manager right now too. So, I mean, I, my prediction for Hosty as a company is I, I could see our midterms <coughs> doubling in, in the next year and, you know, continuing to do so year after year. So, I mean, and the short term, I, I don't see that slowing down. I, I know, uh, well, just recently we talked about it the other day, you know, Fountain now has some short-term rental application True. process and restrictions. So I think it'll be, you know, a lot of continued education for us on, you know, places where we have homes or we're looking to get homes, you know, outside of Colorado Springs proper. You and- know, what's interesting is looking at the last, uh, two or three months because I was of the same opinion of you thinking we were more midterm rentals were coming on versus short-term rental but looking back over the last couple of months we're actually seeing probably two-thirds about ha- two-thirds about half of the homes being short-term rentals and about the other half or one-third be be midterm and I think as like Castle Rock you just recently broke into the Castle Rock market and we've got our attention over there um, we may see that number of short-term rentals even go up as that area expands. <clears throat> How do you think, from what you're looking at working with that most recent homeowner, what does the Castle Rock, Castle Rock market look like? Castle Rock was good. I mean, and uh, the city of Castle Rock is okay with short-term rentals. And they, um, you know, like, obviously, when I, when I pull data and do market research, I, I like to use ours when we can. So for, you know, Castle Rock, I was kind of relying on third-party marketing sources and analysis, which, sure. you know, they're reliable, sure, but I just like the the organic data when we do have it. And, I mean, it was up there. It's going to be, you know, you think of it like, you know, location, you're close to Denver. You still have a, a ton of hiking and options to do. I mean, close to Denver, you're close to the airport. So when people are flying in, that's Good appealing point. to them. You know, so if they don't want to stay down in Colorado Springs, but, you know, they're going up to the mountains, that's not a bad option. Do you remember, did you look at it from AirDNA? Did you see, mm-hmm. was there a market rating, if people are familiar with AirDNA? I remember occupancy. and the Just as a market average overall? I, I believe it was an A. An A? Yep. I, could, I feel like I, I've... I'd agree. And it was like, it was 78 occupancy sure. you know, like for the prediction for the entire region too, as a vague standpoint, which I, I feel, you know, in comparison to the third party data and ours, our occupancies, uh, you know, trending higher in, in a lot of cases. You know, and I was looking at the differences in three, four and five bedroom homes between Cascade and and that Woodland Park area, about 15 miles every direction around Woodland Park, and then Monument. And I wonder how those two markets will perform against Castle Rock, being a little bit outside the Colorado Springs area. And Woodland Park, that area, from for three to four bedroom homes, performed a little bit better than Monument. But in Monument, the larger bedroom home, the five-bedroom home, performed a little bit better than the Woodland Park market. So I wonder if we're going to see unique things like that. Like That tells me that the luxury five-bedroom homes are sought after in the north, kind of northeast part of Colorado Springs towards Monument. And maybe your three, four-bedroom cabins are more sought after in the Woodland Park areas. I wonder what we'll see. Like, will it be a luxury? Will it be a a group of people coming down from Denver looking for just a luxury getaway? What type? What'll be maybe the 
that those unique things about Castle Rock. Sure. Well, and, I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I with the, the room numbers, that's, that's an interesting topic to me because I see kind of a, a saturation in the market when it comes to one and two bedrooms because that's where you get your, your shared dwelling units a lot of times where people section off half their yeah. house or a duplex setting or whatnot. It gets closer what, to being a hotel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, what what in your opinion is the the target bedroom size, you know, where do you see the biggest difference from two to three, three to four, four to five in, in return? This, this always comes up. That's a great question. The, a three, a nice three bedroom home could knock a four bedroom home out of the park or even a, maybe a five bedroom home, depending on how it's set up, the square footage, the living arrangement, the living space, the amenities, Themes so, on the walls. Themes, yeah. yeah, I mean, just the just all those little things that come because you could have a five bedroom home that's at two thousand square feet versus a three bedroom home that might be uh, the same two thousand square feet or, or maybe a little bit more and has more living space, more amenities. So you see higher nightly rate with higher occupancy on average. I have heard and people can cross reference that the three bedroom homes hold, like most people travel in something like a, a six to eight, this should be, we need fact checkers on this, but most people travel. Independent fact checkers yeah, say. <laughs> comment below, <laughs> but six to eight people. So that's like a three bedroom home. And you see that being a good sweet spot, I think for midterm rentals. Um, so potentially three bedroom homes, but when I speak to people, I always push towards having a good, really the higher the bedroom size. You avoid some of that market saturation. You avoid a little bit more of that hotel, one, two bedroom. But again, a two bedroom could knock a three bedroom out of the park. It just depends on how it's appointed, how it's set up, et cetera. So I think to be safe, maybe starter would be your your three, four bedroom homes, well appointed, and then you know go from there. But for speaking directly to Castle Rock, I'd like to see how many one bedrooms there are, how many two bedrooms, how many three bedrooms, four bedrooms, et cetera. Well, the- <clears throat> the home that we uh, just got, it's a uh, three-bedroom, three-bath. So that'll be a good kind of benchmark seeing. Ab- yeah, absolutely. You know, and it was it a luxury. It was a it nice townhome. Yeah, it's basically a tower. It's like a three-story, yes. uh, Pro- awesome rooftop. So Propane grilled. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'm excited to see uh, the performance on that one. And it'll be entering the market in the fall time frame, which, I mean, I feel good about, you know, as an any. And, you know, I give it some time to mature going into the summer market. And I think it'll be a, a very hot commodity. Excellent. Well... Thank you for joining us again, Craig Callion, with the STR Intel Podcast. We'll see you guys next week.